morning to everybody. This is October the 18th. This is the Antioch Missionary Baptist Church with a Reach Out Ministry. If you will, turn with me in the book of Genesis, chapter 22. I'm going to read to you today about Abraham and his son Isaac, who God had asked him to offer him as a sacrifice. Of course, we know he didn't, but uh, we just want to realize that the story of Abraham and what happened to Christ, there are a lot of similarities, and I want to bring those out to you today. In Genesis chapter 22 and in verse 1, it says, And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. Uh, we think of God in a verse that says that he doesn't tempt anybody, but to here it says that God did tempt him. And it's not like tempting him of something wrong. In fact, if we will go over into uh, Deuteronomy in chapter 8, hold your place here. We'll be coming back. But it says here in Deuteronomy chapter 8 in verse 2, it says, And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee for forty years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee and to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandment or no. So the temptation of Abraham really was here. It wasn't like God didn't know his heart. A footnote here says, this doesn't mean that God did not know what was in the hearts of men, but that the knowledge here is something that is to be demonstrated by testing men in a moral experience. Now, I know that probably if you've been a Christian very long, your faith in some ways may have been tested uh, to see if you really was dedicated to staying with the Lord for whatever came up. And I know there have been some people that uh, when they were tested, they didn't do very well. In fact, they kind of turned away from God because of what had happened to them. But others have clinged to God and claimed him even more. And that's what God wants us to do. He tests our heart to see how much our heart is truly committed to doing what he would have us to do. And in that, I hope we realize when temptation comes our way, or especially through Satan or whatever, that we will lean on God even the more. Back in Genesis 22, verse 2, he said, and he said, Now take thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moran, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell of thee. Man, what a thing that must have hit Abraham. God's asking me now, my only son, to go and, and offer him as a sacrifice? But you know what? Way back, he had promised Abraham and Sarah, even when they were really past age of having children, that he would give them a son. So in the back of his mind, I know he's saying here, God's saying now that I should offer him as a sacrifice, but to go way back in my mind, I also remember that he said he would give me a son in my latter years. So he had to be trusting quite a bit on what God had told him earlier that you and Sarah will have a child. In verse 3 it says, And Abraham rose up early in the morning, and he saddled his ass, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up and went into the place which God had told him. And the word clave here means cut wood or gathered wood together uh, for the burnt offering. 
if you will, uh, thinking of these things, like I said, Abraham and the story of Christ have a lot of things in common. Uh, and here he says, and then on the third day, Abraham, in verse 4, lifted up his eyes and he saw the place afar off. Now this goes in alliance with what uh, Christ was in the grave three days and three nights, and he arose. And here it took three days that he took a three-day journey to get to where he could see the mount on which he told him to go to. We also think of the story of Jonah, of how he was swallowed by a great fish, and he was in the belly of that great fish for three days and three nights before he spewed him out of his mouth and he went to Nineveh and he preached the gospel like God had asked him to do before all this happened. He didn't want to do it, <laughs> but after that experience, what I like about it, it said that it was a three days journey to get there from where he was and he didn't take three days to get there. He got there in one day. So he hit the ground and running. <laughs> he didn't want to go through anything like that ever again. In verse 5, it says, And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide here, ye with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again unto you. It says, And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon his son uh, Isaac, his son, and took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. So here, it tells us that they make the journey, and, and just as Isaac, it says here he put the wood of which was going to be the offering upon his own son Isaac, so he was carrying the wood that supposedly was going to be the wood that burned him for a burnt offering. And we know that Jesus put the wood of the cross upon his back to carry it up Golgotha Hill where he would be crucified. So he told it a little wood too, didn't he? And then in verse 7, And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire, the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt of offering? He says, We got everything we need, but we don't have the lamb. And so if you will, Let's go over in uh, to John chapter 1. We're going to start in verse 29 and read 29 and 30. And the next day John, seeing Jesus coming unto him, saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which take away the sins of the world. And this is he of whom I speak. After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. John realized that uh, Jesus Christ had been in existence long before he had ever even come along. And uh, the wind kind of caught my pages, so I'm going to have to go back over here to John chapter 1. And I also want to read a couple of more verses. 35 and 36. Uh, Same chapter, John 1. And again, the next day after John stood and two of his disciples and looked upon Jesus as he walked. He said, Behold the Lamb of God. So John knew undoubtedly that this was the Lamb of God. And we know that Jesus, when he was brought before uh, Pilate and the different ones to, that accused him of uh, claiming to be the Son of God, it's kind of ironic that he was put to death for telling the truth. But he did. And uh, John knew that he was the Lamb of God. 
in the Old Testament, a lamb would be one of the animals that was uh, uh, sacrificed for our sins to roll them forward. But Jesus was the Lamb of God, which once and for all, when he died, we don't have to offer a sacrifice for sin. He became the Lamb of God for the sacrifice of our sins once and for all. We also know that, um, that in the Bible, John 3.16 is probably one of the most memorized and most quoted scriptures there are. It says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. So the son of Abraham, is Isaac is being tested by God through Abraham whether or not he would be willing to follow through with what God told him to do. The difference is God didn't withhold the death of Christ on the cross. He let him go ahead and go through with it in order to pay for our sin debts. And that's a sad thing that he died for our sins, but yet it's a rejoiceful thing to know that he did. We need to give all the honor and praise and glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit for what transpired way back then that we might have eternal life. If you will, back over here uh, in verse 8 of Genesis 22. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they both went of them together. And they came to a place which God had told of him. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him upon the altar, uh, upon the wood. Now, a little young boy, Isaac, very young, don't you think this would have been kind of traumatic to know? Hey, I am the one he's going to sacrifice. That would have been a little bit frightening, but Abraham assured him, God will provide us the lamb. Abraham stretched forth his hand, and took the knife to slay his son. He was right at the point that he was going to kill him. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son. I saw that you were willing to do what I asked of you, and it was a test. It was a test to see if you would follow me, and you did. He says, Seeing thou uh, hast not withheld thy son, thy only son from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes, and he looked, and behold, a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram, and offered him up for a burnt offering instead of his son. Praise the Lord for that. <laughs> and don't you know Isaac was happy that God had provided a sacrifice other than himself. And he says, And Abraham called the name of the place Jehovah Jireh. And that means uh, the Lord will provide. Jehovah we know is God. And Jerah meant he will provide, and he did. He provided them with the ram with his horns caught in the thickets to be the sacrifice rather than Isaac. In verse 15, it says, And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, By myself have I sworn unto the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessings I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. 
So he's saying, because you did this, your seed will be multiplied many times over. As the stars are in the sky and as the sands that are on the seashore. And certainly uh, many people have come uh, into this world backing up through the seed of Abraham. Because Abraham proved to God he was willing to do what he asked of him. In verse 19, And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. Not just your own people, but all of the nations throughout all of the earth will be blessed because you obeyed my voice. If you will, go with me over here in uh, Genesis chapter 26. And I want to read verses 4 and 5. And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars in heaven. This is really repeating what we've already just said. And he says, And I will give unto thy seed all these countries, and in thy seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed. Because Abraham obeyed my voice, and kept my charge for my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. Abraham, I know it was a hard thing for you to hear the angel or to hear God's voice say, offer up your only son as a sacrifice. But because of his obedience toward God, now he's one of the most blessed men of all of God's patriarchs. All nations shall be blessed through him. And we have to be thankful that Abraham was willing to offer his son, but where God offered his son, there was no ram in the bushes to be his sacrifice. Jesus was our sacrifice. But there are a lot of parallels between these two stories. May God bless you and may God keep you. And I thank you for your attention.